So this current series on rebreather diving, we introduced the theoretical knowledge that you need to know to be able to dive a rebreather. We showed you the components, the physical makeup of the rebreather and in general how it works. Today, we're gonna to talk about the certification. So we're gonna go diving for once. Welcome to Everything Scuba. Certification, how do you become certified on a rebreather? Number one, do I need to be a technical diver to take this course? You do not need to be a technical diver to start a rebreather certification. Okay. What are the minimum requirements? Uh, the minimum requirements are advanced open water diver and nitrox diver. Talk about the certification process. Uh, I, for me, I had to perform some online e-learning. Yep. Then you sent me a variety of manuals. Yes. <laughs> so uh, we train specifically on the AP Inspiration, and uh, that is the manual, and you are expected to read it and know it thoroughly, and we covered that in great detail. Talk to me about the actual process of uh, what you're gonna do as an instructor. Uh, any student coming in, uh, getting a baseline of where we're at in our diving. Um, open circuit versus technical versus are you an instructor or are you not an instructor? How long have you been diving? How long was your, how long ago was your last dive? Sure. Um, those all do play in, in a, a little bit of factor uh, to how quickly one picks up the rebreather. Got it. Um, if you haven't been in the water for a while, then it's probably time for a refresher and then we can start talking about uh, closed circuit. Sure. Um, but once we, we, we do decide that the, the rebreather is the way to go, then we, we get together and hash out a, about a six or seven day uh, allotment for our course. Right. Where we then get into what well, we just talked about, the uh, e-learning, yep. the manual, and then we get into building up and breaking down the rebreather. Right. Yeah, and so that, that initial build took us several hours, mm -hmm. uh, which it's not gonna take you several hours once you become familiar with this. Uh, but knowing that in detail. Confined water portion, um, we use some confined water to at least initially learn the basics of buoyancy, which is very, very different, yep. um, and just learning how that machine generally operates in the water. Exactly. Uh, number of minutes that we have to complete on dives and types of skills that we have to do. So we've got 60 minutes of confined water, and then we've got 420 minutes of open water. Um, over that, we need to do that over the course of a minimum of five days. Uh, typically, I find that six to seven days is really where we're shooting for. That sounds like a lot of time. It really does. But I will tell you, in uh, the six days I've been with Mark, um, we've, we've well exceeded the 420 minutes uh, in the open water diving portion. Uh, today alone, we did a, a dive to 110 feet. We were at 110 feet for 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. Uh, we did a little deco on the way up, so that was a, a great learning experience for me. Uh, yesterday and today was my first decompression dives, never have done that before. As a recreational diver, you're very used to seeing that non-decompression limit number on your computer, and you generally don't ever want to see it hit zero, right? <laughs> exactly. And so when it changes to TTS, hey presto. So uh, it's been a, a great, great experience. Once I learn on this rebreather though, uh, can I just go purchase any other rebreather out there? Because they probably all work the same way, right? They're very similar. Okay. Uh, the basics are all the same. The buoyancy is very similar, but we still have to go through the crossover process of learning the ins and outs of each individual rebreather. Right. Um, and, and I have to prove to the manufacturer or whoever I'm, I'm purchasing this from that I am certified on that specific rebreather. Exactly. Right. Uh, so part of the, the process of filling out our waivers, um, we do have to show our certification or proof that you are uh, enrolled in a class. Sure. Um, so we actually don't ship new rebreathers activated um, to the student. Right. Uh, they would either go to the instructor or they would go deactivated to the student and then the instructor would then have a code to upload uh, okay. to unlock the electronics. So you can't actually turn the thing on until, yep. until you get the, the go ahead. Wow, exactly. Interesting, cool. Now let's take a look at the in-water skills that you'll need to do during your rebreather course. First off, all rebreather divers need to perform a pre-dive check, and those include the ABCs. Are all valves open? 
Does your BCD and bailout work as appropriately? And are your computers turned on and set the way they're supposed to be? In shallow water, we'll perform a bubble check. Each diver will check each other to make sure that there is no leaks from the closed circuit system. If you're an avid rebreather diver or rebreather diver wannabe and love to do it silently, check out some of the designs of the new merch in our merch store. Our friends at Triton's Realm have helped us come up with some great rebreather diver shirts. So remember, if you love rebreather diving, dive into everything scuba. It sure helps support our channel and we thank you. Link below in the description. Let's take a look at our handset and all the information it shows us. There are two controllers and controller one is in control. The PO2 set point is 1.3 and the rebreather is in the gradual change mode for the set point. This shows us that our carbon dioxide temp stick reading and there are two batteries, both are charged and battery one is the current in use. Three oxygen sensor readings, how much time we have been underwater during this dive, what our diluent is, in this instance it's air, and what is our max depth and what is our current depth, and lastly our no stop or no decompression limit remaining. One of the odd things initially when diving a rebreather is learning to add diluent so you can breathe as you descend in water if your automatic diluent valve is not open. So here we are adding diluent and also then at depth learning to dive on one breath loop volume. One of the first skills you're going to learn is how to remove the mouthpiece underwater. If you don't switch to open circuit, you might flood the closed circuit. Here instructor Nevin removes it back to open circuit checks that he's at the correct PO2 and then back into closed circuit. If you have to bail out completely from the rebreather, you're going to repeat the process of opening the circuit. Now instructor Nevin is breathing from the diluent inside the rebreather. He's telling his handset that he's about to bail out to his bailout cylinder, pulls that out, ensures that it works, make sure the valve is fully open, and then switches to that alternate regulator. Now to switch back into closed circuit mode, he checks his PO2, reinserts the mouthpiece, and opens back into closed circuit. A quick diluent flush, He'll then instruct his handset that he's back on the closed circuit mode and will then proceed to put away his bailout regulator and cylinder. Side mount divers obviously are very used to this particular skill, but what makes this different is the sheer buoyancy control because of the change in buoyancy characteristics of a rebreather. It's much harder than he makes it look. Yes, we have mask skills in rebreather diving also. And in this instance, he removes the mask and does a low volume clear, trying not to waste any of the loop volume. This next skill will be performed at a depth less than 20 feet here, it appears that he's actually breathing in open circuit mode, but what instructor Nevin is doing is clearing out loop volume to give way to be able to increase his partial pressure of oxygen in the loop. And here you can see him injecting oxygen into the loop to increase the partial pressure. This will increase his decompression speed greatly. And you can see right here, his PO2 is around 1.5 to 1.6, at less than 20 feet, however. Lastly, this is a neat invention that I hadn't seen before offered by AP Diving, 
is actually a mini cylinder that allows you to inflate your DSMB at depth. Next up guys, I am going to go off and do my first decompression dive on a rebreather. My computer switches from NDL to something called TTS, gulp, and we're going to have the help of another YouTube channel, Gary with Defer Diving. He is an experienced closed circuit rebreather diver. He's going to help us out in explaining the theory behind decompression dives. Want to learn more? Click the link down below me. Want to learn more about rebreathers? Click the link to the left side of my head.